what do we talk uh, about when we talk about trauma? For me, it's interesting that every time we experience a trauma, nevertheless, after the experience of this trauma, we have in general an idea, a representation, a theory and of a knowledge of trauma. Uh, and for me, it's very important to clarify or to find the definition, the history of this term, the term trauma, the theory of trauma. Uh, usually we remember uh, the legacy of Freudian psychoanalysis, for instance, and Freudian define uh, the trauma has a sort of a primordial uh, instinct as a sort of drive of our psyche that goes back to a sort of inorganic unconscious where actually the only thing that the mind is doing there is like repeating the experience of trauma almost in an inorganic way. Uh, the story I want to try to remember today, the genealogy of trauma is a different one. I try to, with you to remember another genealogy of this idea that is not the Freudian one. Because in the 20th century, there were many schools of psychoanalysis or psychology of neurology and different notion of trauma were developed. And these are histories of the notion of trauma that also influenced later cybernetics. And interestingly, also the uh, evolution of artificial intelligence. So it's a sort of uh, nucleus, a sort of core uh, that somehow we can relate or to the origin of the digital culture and uh, the digital matrix. So in the early 20th century, there were um, neurologists like von Monakov and Kurt Goldstein. They were working between Switzerland and Germany. And uh, von Monakov first, but then also Kurt Goldstein uh, later, develop uh, one of the first model of neuroplasticity. Today, neuroplasticity, uh, neuroplasticity is quite a fashionable term, but has been or, or was actually already indeed um, studied and uh, theorized in the early 20th century, actually in a very sophisticated way. Neuroplasticity in the best definition, in the most uh, articulated definition for me, is the capacity of our brain to recover after an accident, to reorganize itself, indeed after a trauma. For Monokov called this capacity of our neural networks to reorganize themselves and actually to move also uh, cognitive faculties in different new parts of the brain, diaschesis, in, use this um, Greek term that today we could translate with neuroplasticity. Uh, for Monokov described in patient they had uh, brain injuries, the capacity of the brain, for instance, to delocalize the faculty of language from one area to the other. It was a, an idea of distributed man memory, distributed um, cognition. Um, that was not common uh, all the time. Even today we'll say that some uh, neuroscientists that have a very, um, they have the tendency to go back to a localized uh, model of, of the mind, of the brain. Uh, after von Monakov, we should remember Kurt Goldstein, that was a neurologist active in Berlin and in Frankfurt in the 1920s and 1930s, and that had to then to migrate to, um, to the United States, uh, to New York, when Nazi took uh, power in 1933. Uh, Kurt Goldstein uh, wrote a very influential book called, translated later on as The Organism. And in this book, like for Monokov, he described uh, indeed the human brain has a sort of uh, holistic entity as a, using a lot of, of organismic um, metaphor to describe basically a mind that was able to self-organize, but more specifically and interesting for us to self-organize to survive to trauma. Um, Goldstein was not a pure theoretician, he was a neurologist actually treating soldiers coming back from uh, the front line of uh, World War I. They were soldiers with very heavy brain injuries. They, they had very severe issue, for instance, of uh, memory loss, but also loss of linguistic faculties. And um, Goldstein, nevertheless, in some of the soldiers, uh, managed to record an incredible capacity, or at least uh, uh, a small capacity to recover uh, cognitive function. And Goldstein then developed on this basis of these findings, a very sophisticated idea of, um, of the mind, of the brain and neurology, in the sense that he made this theory that our brain actually in everyday life is able to uh, 
uh, actually learn because it produces small catastrophic reaction. Basically, our brain, its neural networks every day to learn from the environment, but also to progress in the learning, produce small catastrophic reaction. And the whole economy then of the brain becomes this uh, indeed organism that is actually uh, familiar with the form, with the structure of trauma. So I find it very fascinating and very interesting, this idea of small traumas that our brain every day basically self-organize in order to adapt to the environment. And maybe in order to be prepared to bigger traumas that our uh, experience has to encounter. And I have to mention Goldstein for other important reason because the name Kurt Goldstein may sound esoteric to, to many of you, but his book, The Organism, published in 1934 in German, actually in, in the Netherlands when he was in exile, had an incredible influence on the whole French philosophy. If you think that, for instance, a famous philosopher like Michel Foucault dedicated, wrote his first book as a critique of Kurt Goldstein. And we see the influence of Kurt Goldstein clearly on Georges Canguillem, that was a mentor of Foucault, and on a good part of the history of medicine that developed in France, was developed in France after World War II. Goldstein had incredible influence also on Merleau-Ponty and his phenomenology, but but interestingly enough, also on the history of cybernetics. If we take a book like uh, Wiener Cybernetics, that's considered the Bible of cybernetics, published in 1948, we find a chapter on the psychopathologies of a machine. And cyberneticians that were a, a bit controversial figure, in my opinion, because they were like engineers, they wanted to describe the world as a machine. Politically, they were pretty conservative and pretty questionable in their um, attitude, but they took a lot of inspiration from the neurology of the time and from models of neuroplasticity, from, from Monaco, from Goldstein, and also from the American neurologist uh, Lashley. But there were only these three models of neuroplasticity at the time. And when the cybernetician, they were talking about psychopathology as a machine, they were referring to these models coming from neurology. And indeed, they wanted to imitate in machine the capacity of uh, the brain basically to uh, organize and survive to trauma. So it's very interesting that at the core of cybernetics, also the first experiment of artificial intelligence, of the idea of distributed memory in artificial neural networks, you find this model of new distributed memory, neuroplasticity, capacity of self-organization and survival uh, to survive to trauma that were coming from the neurology of the time, from the German uh, speaking neurology. This is a, so a nucleus uh, of uh, the development of the philosophy and the technology, both trajectory of the 20th century that for me is very interesting. And it's a story good to remember because we forgot it because today when we talk about um, trauma in the age of artificial intelligence, or we talk about the trauma that this sober exposure or overuse of digital technologies producing in our life, somehow we, we forget uh, also these important uh, histories of the notion and maybe we approach the problem. I think this is an important um, tradition also of philosophy of thinking to remember because indeed has a very proactive idea of the human mind uh, and so to speak a proactive agenda also to face trauma. And it's important as uh, in any um, treatment of trauma that uh, probably uh, we, we know that indeed the first important thing is the, is the fact that you, we should never uh, victimize the subject. We should never construct the subject of a trauma as a victim. We should be always able to indeed envision the subject as an active um, subject, even in the experience of trauma. This is of course difficult. When we talk about the psychopathology of capitalism, in a broader sense, my thought always go to Fanon and to uh, his studies on the psychopathology of uh, colonialism uh, back at uh, this time in Algeria. I think that indeed this notion of trauma cannot be today distinguished uh -huh. from the condition of the economy, of the capitalism, of the digital capitalism we are uh, enmeshed today. And, um, this is interesting, just as a maybe final note, 
to remember that we cannot abandon the sophisticated idea of trauma just to leave it as a sort of inspiration that then was very fertile and prolific in the tradition of cybernetics and artificial intelligence. If you look uh, uh, at the history of recent artificial intelligence, you find paper by one of his important um, one by one of the godfather of deep learning, that is Hinton, that brings the title Optimal Brain Damage. And if you take just this expression, optimal brain damage, apply to machine, use only to machine, you understand that something uh, went through the wrong uh, pipe, probably. And I think we have to uh, then reclaim somehow this tradition and rebring this tradition within a more sophisticated understanding of the day of digital capitalism, also called cognitive capitalism. So my um, proposal simply for this debate, it is to go back once again to, to the work of Kurt Goldstein, among others, that brought within um, neurology, within psychology, a sophisticated notion of um, neuroplasticity. And to this idea that, yeah, we, we have to get familiar with uh, a mind, ours, that probably every day is unconsciously organizing small catastrophic reaction to uh, survive, to face uh, the small and big trauma uh, of the present.